Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to TechRed Reviews. The Nexus 7 is an absolutely fantastic tablet, but today I have some tips and tricks so you can make it even better. So right here I have the 2013 Nexus 7. A few of these tips and tricks are specific to this exact tablet, but the majority of them will work on any Android device, whether it be a Nexus device including the Nexus 10 and Nexus 5, or just an Android tablet like the Samsung Galaxy Tab, or really anything, although for some of these tips you will need to be running Android 4.4 KitKat or above. With KitKat, Google actually removes the default ability to add lock screen widgets. So as you can see, when I'm on my lock screen on my tablet, and I try and swipe through to get to my lock screen widgets, it doesn't let me add anymore. You're going to want to unlock your tablet, go into the settings app right here, and then scroll down to security. In security, within one of the first few options, you should be able to see an option that says enable widgets. Click on that and then it should be checked off. So now when I go to my lock screen, I can swipe through to add more. So say I just wanted to see my battery whenever I was on my lock screen, I'd add that and now I have a lock screen battery widget. So this next step is specific to KitKat devices. With 4.4, Google introduced a new runtime, which is basically how Android runs and opens all of the apps on it. Previously, they were using Dolvik, and they now switched to Art, but it's not enabled by default, so I'm going to show you how to enable that right now. Before I show you, I just want to warn you, it is experimental, and some apps might not run properly, so I just want to let you guys know that before I show you how. If you still want to do this, on your tablet, head into the Settings option, scroll down to Developer Options, it should be near the bottom, and if this isn't enabled by default, you're going to have to go into About Tablet, and type on the build number a few times until it says you are now a developer and then when you go back the developer options will have appeared. So once you're in it, turn it on in the top right corner and then it should be about the fourth option down. It says select runtime. I've already switched my tablet to art so I'm not going to redo this because it can take actually a half hour to 45 minutes for Android to reprocess all of the apps using the new runtime. So once you do that, you should be able to do a quick reboot. After that, your tablet should be running the ARP runtime, and you should see a bit of an improvement in speed. So on a tablet, the thing everybody really cares about is battery life, so there's a really easy way to greatly improve your battery life. To do this, you once again are going into the Settings app. Instead of going to Developer Options this time, you're going to go to the Location option, which is under Personal. From here, you're going to go to the mode, and when you click on that, there should be three. There's high accuracy, battery saving, and device only. So the high accuracy is when your tablet's using GPS, Wi-Fi, and mobile networks to determine your location. Device only is using only GPS. And battery saving uses a combination of Wi-Fi and mobile networks to determine your exact location. Sometimes it can be quite as specific as GPS, but it offers huge improvements to battery life and it's definitely worth turning on. So turn on battery saving mode. There's one thing I hate is apps that have constant, annoying, and pointless notifications that just clutter up your notification bar and make you constantly turn on your tablet to see if you've got an important message. So there's actually a really easy way to disable these notifications from specific apps and only those apps won't be able to show notifications. So to do this, we're gonna head into the settings again. And here you're going to go to the apps option. This is under device. And then you can scroll over to downloaded or just all of them, which is all the way to the right. But under downloaded, choose any app you don't want. For now, I'm just going to use the Chromecast app. And under the force stop option, there's an option where it says show notification. If you uncheck that, it'll warn you. But if you hit OK, then that app won't be able to show notifications anymore and you shouldn't have to worry about notifications from that specific app anymore. A lot of people still want to add bookmarks from their web browser onto their actual Android home screen and unfortunately Google kind of buried the way to do this and it's not very intuitive. So if you want to do this, go into the Chrome web browser, find a website you like, hit the bookmark bar in the upper right which is a little star and then you'll be able to save it. Save it under mobile bookmarks. Once you hit save, you then need to exit out of your web browser, go into your app drawer, scroll all the way over to widgets, and then it should say bookmark, and you're gonna long hold on that, drag it to your home screen, and then here it'll give you a list of all the bookmarks you have on your tablet, and then you can select the specific one you want, 
Now whenever you tap on it, you can find that article from your homepage. The next one is a really simple tip and trick that should work on any device with on-screen buttons. It's simply that you just swipe up from the bottom of your screen to access Google Now without having to wait for it to load or finding the app in the app store. Although I really like how the Google keyboard looks, I don't like keyboards that make sounds, so there's a way to turn off the click sounds on the Google keyboard. To do this, you're going to go into your settings app once again. Scroll down to language and info. It's under personal. Then here, when you see the default keyboards and input method, the one that says Google Keyboard, there should be a little settings icon all the way over on the right. You're going to tap on that, and then once you're in it, under general, there's an option that says sound on key press. Make sure that is unchecked. So now when you're using your keyboard, you will no longer have these sounds. This last trick isn't so much of a tip, it's more just an easter egg that Google built into Android that's really fun to use. You're going to want to go into your settings app, scroll all the way down to about tablet or phone, and where it says Android version, tap on that a few times really fast, and you should get this flying K, and if you spin it around a few times, it'll show what Android version you're running. And as this is Android KitKat, it looks like the Android logo on a KitKat wrapper. And if you long hold that, you'll get a tile game where you can see all the different versions of Android throughout history. So you have ice cream sandwich, donut, cupcake, honeycomb. They're all there and it's just a really cool tip to show. As always guys, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out. And I'll see you guys in the next video.